You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, the founder and chief automation officer of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business marketing automation, where we focus on turning digital marketing professionals into automation service providers. And in this episode, I have Greg Jenkins, the founder of Monkey Pod Marketing, Marketing, where he focuses on empowering entrepreneurs through online courses and educational resources. More specifically, Greg helps Keep and Infusionsoft users understand their marketing software in a different way and at a higher level to maximize the return on their monthly investment. And prior to Monkey Pod, uh, Greg worked at Infusionsoft as a curriculum developer and a lead trainer for uni, uh, Infusionsoft University. And that is really what, how our paths crossed is our mutual respect and love for educating the marketplace. Okay. Uh, specifically to, to marketing automation and Greg, everybody for, for this episode, he's, he's here to remove the confusion from crafting the customer journey. OK, there's a lot that goes in to making sure that your customer journey is personalized and effective. And we're going to have we're going to have a candid conversation about Infusionsoft. It's it's unfortunate moniker that that the marketplace gave it and and how to achieve success. Anyhow, I think that uh, somebody from Infusionsoft is the appropriate person to talk about removing confusion. <laughs> and you all uh, probably already know where I'm going with this, but I I say this in the podcast and, and I just want to make sure that when we're all making fun of and, you know, we're competing and even as users, we're uh, selecting various software. Maybe one doesn't do something another does. Maybe one is just too hard to use. At the end of the day, Infusionsoft has done something no other platform has done. Uh, we talk about that in the episode and we give them their just due and their respect. OK, so I'm excited to have Greg on who I have met only a handful of times. Well, actually, not even a handful of times once <laughs> I met Greg once in person. But some people, you know, you meet, they have a lasting impact on you. And I would consider Greg uh, beyond just an associate, but a friend. I trust his judgment. Um, he's got a strong, thriving community of, of Infusionsoft uh, professionals. And again, I couldn't think of anybody better than him to come on and really talk about how do we go beyond the confinements and complications of software at times and craft the the perfect or ideal customer journey. All right. So before we jump into the podcast, if you're new, make sure you listen to this episode in its entirety and then leave a five star rating and review after you subscribe. OK, listen to it. See what we're about. I promise you, I promise to over deliver. OK, so whatever your expectation is, I'm here to exceed it. Um, and you can show me appreciation by subscribing and leaving a five star rating and review. If you are a listener to the podcast and you're not subscribed yet, please do so. We're an Apple podcast, Google podcast. We're on YouTube. You can subscribe there. Make sure that you are subscribed and you leave a five star rating and review. It is greatly appreciated. So let's jump into the podcast with myself and Greg and, and, and let's discuss this customer journey. Greg, welcome to the podcast. Always. You know what? Um, I can't say glad to have you on because that that would be too small, Greg. Like it's always, <laughs> always good to connect. And I'm so happy to be able to have a conversation with you because we always are connecting and engaging in some way. But now everybody gets to see it. Everybody gets to glean from it, man. So how you it doing? Is it's a privilege. I am a bona fide fan of, of, of the show of Chris Davis. Um, but yeah, man, I, I feel you. I'm sure, I'm sure you get this right. I, I, I feel like the word excited has been spoiled because every marketer oh is God. like, I'm so excited to tell you about, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, no, but, but I'm actually excited to record this, right? Yeah. It's like, how do I, how do I tell you that it's not hyperbole? 
right? How do I find another word? Right. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. um, I I'm looking forward to this and the listeners may not have a clue on what a treat this episode is going to be. And I'm, I'm looking forward to diving in and, and maybe hopefully I'll be able to even put you on the spot. Like that's the goal is like, can I, can I, can I shake Greg? You know, you're so rooted in what you know. So that, that, that'll be interesting, but start from the beginning, let everybody know a little bit about yourself and, and, and your business. Sure, man. So my brand is, is monkey pod, monkey pod marketing. Um, and I serve small businesses, specifically keep users. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I do it through through education and training, which is yeah. part of what sets my brand aside is, is really focusing on helping those who want to, you know, want to understand the strategies that they're they're operating in their business and the technology that support those strategies. Because uh, there are plenty of small businesses, successful and otherwise, who don't care how it gets done. They just want results and they're, you know, they're outsourcing that. Um, so I serve the the DIYers, the people who do have an appetite for that and, you know, have their hands on the keyboard, their sleeves rolled up and are, are pressing the yeah. buttons themselves. Um, my introduction to entrepreneurship, well, I grew up in a, in like a small business entrepreneurial family, but um, I ran a business right after college servicing and installing draft beer dispense systems. That was my like mm. birth into the small business world. A typical local service provider, you know, we had accounts that I would visit. We would do like a a cleaning every, you know, three weeks for some accounts, four weeks for others. So it was a subscription kind of model. Um, And it was entirely manual. You know, my CRM was a notepad at the center console of the van where I would like circle somebody's name if they called and like check it off if I called them back. And you know, oh, it was funny. very, yeah, v- so very you were analog. So you systematic then, Greg. You even well, had a system then. I mean, I hesitate to describe it as a system <laughs> knowing what I know now, but um, there was a process. Yeah, there always is. Yeah. Um, and then I, you know, I was 25, 26 years old and I found myself like burnt out. <laughs> I found mm. my, cause it was, it was like um, to, to, to grow the business. I only saw one path, which was just work more hours, yeah. like go yeah. knock on more doors and get more accounts. And if they had a draft beer system, we could, you know, clean it or add lines for them. If they didn't have a draft beer system, we could install it. Um, but the problem with 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 getting new accounts is then you have to do the work. You have to, you know, you have to go fulfill on it. So yeah. I found myself in this this cycle that I didn't know how to break out of, um, where I didn't like the path forward. The path for growing the business um, just didn't appeal to me. It just sounded draining. And I started to build a team, but then I found myself managing those people and. Um, yeah, so I eventually my business partner bought me out. Um, I decided mm. I needed a change, and I moved. I, I in that um, transition, I moved to Arizona, where a friend of mine said, "Hey, you should check out Infusionsoft," as as the company was called at the time. And I said, "Screw you! I'm a beer guy, not a yeah. not a technology guy. Why yeah. would I look at this, you know, nerdy Infusionsoft company?" And then. A couple months later, I uh, a couple months later, while I was still unemployed, I finally was like, "Well, maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go check out this website." And Chris, I tell you, man, I was like doing preliminary research to see if this was a company that I might be interested in or might that there might be an opportunity for me at. Yeah. And and watching like the even the simple videos on their website, I was like, "Holy cow! This would have changed my life. This would have changed that business." Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is what I was missing. But the interesting thing is that I didn't know to ask for it. Like, sure, I didn't understand that there were, you know, that there were, you know, email follow-up systems that I could put my clients on a recurring billing schedule and not have to drive to their restaurant to collect a physical check. Like those were the things that I was doing. And the idea of like optimizing meant like finding a faster route to get to the restaurant, not like, you know, finding a digital way to, to process that transaction. So my lens was just underdeveloped at the time. Mm-hmm. And it rapidly changed once I discovered Infusionsoft. And I did get a job there uh, onboarding new clients and, and working with them. And the light bulb, you know, light bulbs, <laughs> plural, kept kept yeah. going off as I saw, you know, the role that that automation and systems and, and technology could play for simplifying or, or multiplying what a small business um, is about. Because I, my my business would have been a perfect candidate for for what these tools yeah. offer, yeah. and so it became kind of a a charge of mine to help as many small businesses as possible avoid those same 
you know, potholes and, and pitfalls. Cause I had, I had the scar tissue of, of kind of, of kind of doing it myself. Yeah. I love it, man. And it, it brings me back to, uh, my entry into Infusionsoft and, you know, I had, my introduction into business, I, I think I've said this before, is was through Internet marketing. I had people are shocked. I had no clue how to use the Internet, man. Sure. I, I was proficient in blogspot.com and that yeah. meant I knew how to follow blogs. Like I knew how to find them and follow them and check them. Still every didn't day. know what an RSS feed was, didn't but you knew how to click goodness. subscribe. Yeah. 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 I was like, what is that? Um, but you're bored at a corporate job every morning. I had a roster of blogs that I would check. It was like my newsletter. I mean, my newspaper. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember Office Autopilot being the only tool that people ever talked about. Mm -hmm. Now it's yeah. Entreport. And I had a couple friends or I should say acquaintances that I met through these programs that I enrolled in that needed help. So I started to do that. And I didn't even know that was automation at the time. I just thought, oh, this is software that you need in your business. It's business software is what I thought. And I remember when... I was looking at trying, you know, I'm a web developer trying to make money. I'm like, where is the money? I have to differentiate myself. Like everybody's a web developer. There's people's grant, literally Greg, there was one person whose grandmother recommended a theme for them to download. And I said, you know what, the day I'm competing, no knock against grandmother, grandmothers can be technically savvy, but Absolutely. this one wasn't, I knew this one wasn't Greg. It was different, man. Um, it's like, you know what? I need, to, I need to set myself apart and I did not know how to. So actually, and what I want to talk about today, actually the term Confusionsoft is what mm. attracted me to Infusionsoft. Cause my thinking was this, if everybody's confused and doesn't know how to use it and I learn how to use it, thus I become yep, important, right. like <laughs> I become valuable. I had no clue about the company, the backstory, where they were located. I just knew it was this green looking logo when this and the website was antiquated. It's nothing near what we see at Keep Now. Sure. I mean, if we could just roll back the hands of time to what Infusionsoft looked like back then. Oh, my gosh. But I was like, OK, I'm going to do it. And then there was the two thousand dollar starter fee. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe <laughs> maybe I won't do it yet. How serious but, am I? Yeah, right. About, right. Yeah. But back then, Greg, I'm, I, I have to tell you, man, it was a badge of honor to be able to pay that two thousand dollars Kickstarter mm -hmm. fee eventually and then be paying three hundred dollars a month. Right. Like yeah. it yeah. was like it, that alone was like, hey, look, I'm an Infusionsoft user. So, you knew. Oh, that person has invested three thousand dollars, and they're paying at least three hundred dollars a month. They must some be swag, cool, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now, look, man, go ahead and if a startup tries that now, oh my goodness, you're you're done before you begin. So for for somebody like yourself, man, um, again, I, I I think you're the one of the most decorated, and the only reason why I say one because I don't know everybody. Right. So I'm leaving <laughs> some space. But for me, in my personal sphere, you're the most decorated infusion soft uh, expert, I'll say. And and I think what you you mentioned earlier is what really set you apart is the fact that you go from an educational perspective. And so many people, myself included back then, Greg, we were just trying to monetize, monetize your ignorance on the platform. You don't know how to do it. Pay me to do it and I'll do mm -hmm. it and I'll make money, money doing it. So how Infusionsoft, rightfully so, unrightfully so, whatever your disposition is, there is the term Confusionsoft. It's been yes. I, I feel like um, the ClickFunnels group has maybe thrown it around a, a yeah. little more reckless. <laughs> right. They, they may have fanned, fanned the flame, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. OK, I, I see what you're saying. But, you know, um, but sure. at the end of the day, we have like we have to be honest in few what Infusionsoft by Keep, you know, what they have done for the small business space has never been done. They revolutionized yep. a space and equipped us with software that, as you mentioned, we didn't even know we needed, you know? So yeah. as many marks they get as making it confusion, con confusing and this, this and that, it has fueled the success of countless businesses, man. And I don't want anybody new to the space to come in and slander that name without the scars and bruises. You can you know what you can't say confusion right. off if you just <laughs> learned about if you know it as keep 
right? And if you just learned about it two to three years ago, you can't say those words. You don't know what that, you know, you don't know what that means. You haven't, you haven't gone through the, the, the flames, right? So in your experience, Greg, what I want to do is there's Infusionsoft users listening. There's maybe other platform users that are looking at Infusionsoft. What would, what would your tips be in making it, you know, this term Confusionsoft, breaking that, breaking away from that? How do we demystify how to leverage the true power of Infusionsoft by Keep? What, what would you, what approach and steps would you give people? So there's a quote um, or a, you know, a, a rebuttal that you'll hear tossed around um, from the, the Infusionsoft faithful, mm -hmm. um, which is like, it's a, it's a lousy carpenter who blames his hammer, right? Mm. Um, and and it's, it's interesting because, you know, regularly I hear complaints from frustrated, um, you know, small businesses who, who are stuck on something and it feels confusing to them. And it doesn't help that, you know, confusion and infusion <laughs> rhyme. So, rhyme. you know, that, but, but that, that, situation, I mean, with, with the exception of the rhyming, is not unique to Infusionsoft. It's not unique to Keep. That right. exists in every right. um, community uh, or every every um, user yeah. base for any yeah. any platform um, yeah. to some extent, right? Yeah. And there's yeah. different things that people get tripped up by. But what I like to remind people of um, is that this software, um, whether, and I'll, 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 I, my experience is you know, predominantly with Infusionsoft, that's where yep. I've kind of planted my flag and the, the yep. audience that I serve. Um, but I think the advice that I'm going to give is is agnostic of platform. Sure, um, sure. I think there's this challenge that small business owners have where they look at a software and they think like, this is the software that I use. So therefore, you know, it's for me. And the reality is there are, you know, dozens or hundreds of business models in different industries and in different parts of the world um, of different shapes and sizes who all use that platform as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And so if this tool is so robust or so diverse that it can serve all of those types of people and all of those types of businesses, then there will be features and, and, you know, use cases that aren't applicable to you. And so it becomes, mm -hmm. it becomes a game of like, you know, how do I look at this set of, you know, 100 features, let's just say 100 for round mm -hmm. numbers, and figure out which, you know, 25 I need for my business. Yeah. And like, that's, it kind of bends our brains a little bit. Yep. Because, you know, I, the the like consumer in us, the, the thrifty consumer in us wants to like wring every drop of value out of the software. Yep. But the, the trap you fall into is you start clicking on stuff and using features that like aren't intended for you and they don't play a role in your business. And that is where I think it adds a lot of confusion yeah. um, because you, you find yourself going down these rabbit holes, trying to trying just to use the features for feature sake because they're there, not because they solve a specific problem in your business or not because they add an element to the experience that you're creating with your customers. So rather than approaching it from like a software, like feature, you know, forward sort of um, perspective, it's really about defining first, what does your business need? Mm -hmm. And I actually recommend that people like write up the job description, yes. like an actual, like almost as if you are hiring an employee, like what yeah. am I hiring keep to do? What am I hiring yeah. active campaign to do? Yeah. What is its job in my company? And, you know, you write up, well, it's going to manage contacts. It's going to help, you know, follow up with new leads. It's going to X, Y, or Z. And then, and then you go about, you know, finding the right tool, selecting the right tool that does, that fill, fills that role. Right. Yeah. And if it's Infusionsoft, if it's Keep, like, great, but it may not be. It may be yep. that another platform, you're like, oh, I actually need pipe drive. And that's, you know, the, the thing that, you know, gives me what I'm after. Um, yeah. But until you have that clear, like, job description, it becomes, you know, it can be really challenging to to um, explore your software because you don't have a specific um, you know roadmap for how you're planning to adopt it. So that's yeah. where I recommend people start is like getting clear first on the objectives that this is going to play for your business, um, and then remembering that like you know nobody said you have to use a hundred percent of this software, that's right? It, man, yeah. That there's this unspoken like pressure on people to like use all these features, <laughs> but like nobody's telling you to do that. Yeah. And I wish you could, I wish you could like give people the blinders to only grab the things that they need or reframe it. 
Like it's not about using 100% of the features. It's about using 100% of what your brand needs. And 100% is personal. It is like, a, it is your own like section of that pie. And like, if you can focus on that, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're exponentially more likely to succeed than starting the other way. Greg, man, I'm loving, I'm loving this because, you know, I've always viewed it because, because like you said, it's not specific to Infusionsoft. You can get lost in any of these platforms and it, then they don't have to be all in ones. Right. And, and I, I always, sure. you know, I've always looked at it as, you know, these platforms become the buffet to the starving entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> right. And, and what, what is the entrepreneur starving of success? They just want success. And they think they're they're You know, everybody's gone to the buffet on an empty stomach. All of the food looks good. There's yeah. stuff, there's stuff that you know you don't like. And, yeah. and truth be told, after you've eaten it and you've satisfied that initial hunger, you're like, why did I put that in my body? Right. But they come into it and they're starving for some form of digital success. All of these features look good. And they think they have to fill their plate with all of these features and then go home and then use them all when it's like, no. Gluttons. You- <laughs> <You're> gluttons. <laughs> gluttons. Yeah. Right? Everybody, yeah. This temper is temper. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's to your point. How do I, because it's twofold, right, Greg? One is how do I define just those features that I need and then the discipline to be satisfied with just those, (laughs) right? And not get tempted like, hmm, maybe I should be using more because there's some guilt I see some people have where it's just like, I'm not even using the platform to its capacity. So even when I was at Active Campaign, people would call and say, they would apologize. I know I'm not using all of the settings and I would have to (laughs) stop them and say, listen, as long as you're using the features that are successful, you're using enough. You do not have to try to use everything. People shy away from, I think, my impression is that a lot of people shy away from like the ROI conversation, measuring ROI from our tools, right? But but it, it is, if you treat it like an employee, right? Then what am I paying this employee? And and it, you know there are versions of Keep that cost le- much less than three hundred dollars a month now. But let's say yep. it's three hundred dollars a month. Okay, so you're paying thirty six hundred dollars, thirty nine hundred dollars a year. I don't, I'm, I'm not a mathologist, but you're mm-hmm. paying a couple thousand dollars a year for this yep. employee. Um, and so the question is like, well, is it worth it? Is it paying a positive ROI? And if you're yeah. not using any of the features, it's probably not worth it, right? Yeah. Um, but where is that break-even point? And like, you remember, this employee you're hiring, it doesn't take days off. It works 24 hours a day. It doesn't need, <laughs> you know, PTO, right? Like, you've, you've, like that's part of the equation here. Yeah. So it should be a financially responsible uh, investment. You're, you're hiring this tool to play a job for your business, and you're paying it hopefully much less than you would be paying an employee to do a similar role. Um, and they're, you know, it, it, with the nature of automation is that it doesn't get tired. Right. So yes. you can load it up and you can, you can, you know, pour more into it without necessarily, I mean, depending on your, your, what your, your uh, version limits are, you might need to like level up the number of contacts or the number of emails or, or yeah. the different, you know, add-ons. But the point here is that like, do the math, right. Let's figure out like, where does that ROI, ROI come from? And you might find, that you launch, you know, a single automation, you launch one campaign that, you know, nurtures uh, people after an appo- after their consult and drives them towards joining your, your membership, right? Yeah. And if that earns ROI for you, if that like, you know, p- pays for the subscription, then anything else you do with this platform is gravy, right? Is, yes. is icing on the cake. But there's, but people come at it from the other perspective where they're like, but I'm not this, that, or the other thing. And it's like, well, okay, th- that's just opportunity. But my, my recommendation for people is to like decide where that point of return will be, where that break even yeah. point is with your software. Yeah. And when you like get started or, or now, if, if you got started years ago and never did this, do it yeah. now, yeah. like focus on, on, you know, measuring, like, is this software paying for itself? Because without fail, whether it's keep or anything else, there will come a time where you are like frustrated with it or you're disappointed or there's a bug mm-hmm. and you're like questioning this investment. Yep. And the way that you like take emotion out of that equation is by going to the ROI and being like, That's well, it. I, you know, mm-hmm. as frustrated as I am by this instance, it still made me, you know, 10 grand last month and I spent $300 on it. So mm-hmm. like, here's, here's the, here's the trade off, right? Man, that's so powerful, Greg, because you're right. That ROI 
conversation is you, you know why it's not had because that that same onus that you're putting on the technology is really yours right and i, I don't want to <laughs> yes. own that responsibility of success yes. technology i just want it to do it i want to pay for it do what somebody said and be successful why yeah. do why do i have to define what success looks like why do i have to measure that why do i have to set objectives that don't just keep my 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 people align but my technology too right it's it's tough chris i am a <laughs> i'm a people person and i believe the best in people and that's part yeah. of why i love um the education space is because people are like you could tell when they have an appetite for it you could see when the light bulb yeah. goes on yeah, um man. and and it's really rewarding and there are also plenty of people who are just looking for a crutch they're just looking for a scapegoat and it's it's you know i i think that if you really dug in with a lot of the people who are complaining about confusion soft or it, it not performing yeah. you would discover that there's a a an underlying issue with their business model or their, their deliverable or the, the experience that they're creating yes. and that the problem, you know, didn't go away when they switched away from Infusionsoft and it probably existed before they adopted Infusionsoft. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just, they're, they're um, projecting it onto the, this, the software. Absolutely. Um, but you know, you can trace that back to, in most instances, you know, misaligned expectations, like, well, yeah. what, who, when you signed up, like, what were you hoping this would do? And yeah. you know, how, how was that expectation set from, from the onset? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I want to talk about, um, I want to ask you about some of your most successful campaigns in, in Infusionsoft, just to give our, our listeners, uh, uh, some insight. But before that, uh, how do you, you know, it's one of the hardest things to do is, untrain right get people to unlearn these ter these misguided approaches to not just the software greg right just marketing automation in general marketing and sales automation um in your experience as you've been educating it and really champion championing ch being the forerunner <laughs> How about that? Yeah, man, that word just won't come out. I Being do that all runner, the time, right? Yeah. And and leading with education because that's an intentional choice, Greg. I know you. I know your business, and I know your brand. At any point, you can switch it to where you the focus is revenue based, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, look, this is more leads, more 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 clients. But you intentionally choose to educate in this path. In this path, what are you finding are are some of the key things that help people unlearn this? this mandated uh, 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 broad stroke approach that gets them in a position where they're approaching the tool incorrectly, they're blaming the software. How do you get them to change that approach, man? Yeah. Uh I think I, I describe education and you'll, you'll might appreciate, you might appreciate this as the, the get rich slow gig. <laughs> I, I, I chose, I chose education because um, there, well, number one, because there were fewer people doing it, right? Yes. Like I, I yeah. recognized a need that Infusionsoft yeah. users were having to like right. adopt the software. And there is a learning curve with it um, because not, not necessarily because the software is complicated though. That's a fair criticism, but because small business is complicated. And so understanding the parallels like between your business and the software, where they overlap, where they can serve one another and where they shouldn't um, is just like a, it's an intricate conversation. So yeah. um, that's, that's where I planted my flag. But the second prong of, of education was that I knew I could reach more people. Mm. Um, whereas if you'd go like the service provider route, if you're working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, like your bandwidth is finite and in the education space, you know, ostensibly your reach is, is infinite. And so that was really appealing to me was knowing yeah. I could, I could serve a much broader audience, create a bigger impact that way. But yeah. um, your question was like, you're fighting against these misconceptions, these myths um, that like are being perpetuated still, right? Like there's, yes. I think there are fewer people like you and I um, helping people understand. You actually had an episode recently. It's not about the technology, right? Yeah. Um, which was great. And I will give your listeners uh, a, a plug to go listen to that one once you're done here. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, right. Don't get it. Yeah. Yourself. But the, the way that I, I combat those is um, I, I mean, it's not easy and it's yeah. ongoing. So yeah. I'm constantly looking for new ways to shine a light on that to help people come to that realization. Yeah. But what I have 
what I have distilled my learnings down to is a, a process that I call the one conversation. Mm. Um, and I call it that because if I could have only one conversation with any small business owner on the planet, then this is the conversation I would have. Mm. Um, and there's a bunch of terms for it. I'm actually kind of excited to share this with you, Chris, because I'm sure you'll have your own like vernacular, your own way of thinking yeah. about this. But effectively, it, it, it challenges um, a business owner to look at like their product as, or whatever it is that you sell. And if you mm -hmm. sell multiple things, just start with one of them yeah. as the, um, you know, as this central piece on a timeline. So extend a line out in either direction from that. Okay. Um, and you have everything leading up to that product. Then you have the actual purchase of that product. And then you have everything that comes afterward. Yeah. Um, and the composition of those three things is, is your customer journey, right? You've yeah. got the pre-purchase, you've got the purchase experience, and you've got the post-purchase. Yeah. Um, and, you know, right just from there, you could see light bulbs going off for people because they're like, oh, yeah, after the purchase, <laughs> you know, because so right. many people, um, I think you talk about this one as well in the delivery episode you did, yes. but uh, you, so many people like they treat the sale as the destination and they forget to design the experience they want their customers to have. Right? Yeah. It's just, and we've all experienced that as a consumer as well, where you buy something and then you just, it's just a cliff. There's it's crickets. The cliff, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I challenge people to say, all right, draw that timeline out, right? And then start to insert, start to identify what are the milestones that, mm. that, that represent progress along it. And maybe it's just like, maybe it's just three. Maybe it's like, okay, yes. they joined our, our webinar or they requested a, um, you know, a quote or they um, attended an event and then they bought and then they bought again or joined our membership group or joined our partner program or told a friend, right? So maybe there's only three milestones, um, but the more milestones you can get, the more granular you can get, the the, the, the better. Yeah. Um, and it becomes about those gaps in between them. It forces you to start looking at, okay, well, what paves the path from mm -hmm. milestone one to milestone two, from milestone two to milestone three or, or, or three to four. Um, and what I, what I think a lot of people find is that there are, like very clear drop-offs where they either have no follow-up in place or they have, you know, inadequate, insufficient follow-up yeah. um, or where just like it's disjointed because it was designed at a different time. And now like the things around it don't fit. And so what you're looking mm -hmm. for is not just like, do we have something planned for each one of these stages, but are they cohesive? Is there like a, a, a continuous thread that guides our leads and prospects all the way through this, this experience? Um, and then, you know, the, the, the one conversation kind of evolves like, okay, so you got your milestones, you got your bridges that, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. span the chasms in between. Now, where would automation enhance this? Like, yeah. where can we use automation to lighten the lift so that if we dial up the traffic, we're not going to feel overwhelmed. We're not going to like fall apart, struggling to fulfill for these clients or what have you. But where could we use automation? Um, not just, not, not necessarily to take people out of the equation, but to allow our human effort to be used more strategically, right? Because yeah. that's, I think that's a misconception about automation is people think it means like less humans yeah. and it doesn't have to. It only means, you know, automation only means cold and robotic if it's done poorly, right? Yeah. If it's done well, it allows you to focus on the things that are the best use of your time. And if that's like, you know, having an onboarding phone call in person with people, then keep doing that. If it's writing a, you know, a handwritten thank you card, then keep doing that, right? Yeah. I, I think that there's an important, I think it's important to retain some, you know, aspects of, of the human intervention here, but to use automation so that you're controlling where it is, so that you're not yeah. creating, you know, bottlenecks or, or pinch points for yourself. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I hear the the phrase, I know I should be automating this or I know like this could be automated. Maybe. And, yeah. Right. Right. And, yeah. and the young me, trust me, the young just I've got it in Fusionsoft. Just I, I put it on everything. Look, I'm trying to automate my tie my shoelaces. Right. Of like, course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But the more mature me respects process now. And when someone makes that statement, it's like, well, maybe. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. Perhaps I could I make the case? Maybe you need less. And they look at me, they're like, wait a minute, 
but you're the auto, you're yeah. the automation professor. Why, why are you not telling me more, more, more? And it's like, look, man, it, Greg, what I loved about what you just explained was it's all about the customer journey. There is nothing more important than that journey. And automation is an aid to ensure that that journey is as personalized and perfected, not perfect, perfected as possible. And when I think of perfected, you talked about the milestones. When someone is on their way to a milestone and they drop off, automation is there to catch them Bingo. and just put them right back on the path. That's it. <laughs> yeah, to, to, it right. should make it should make them feel led. It should help them yes. understand like, oh, here's the thing I'm supposed to do next. Right. As yep. humans, we yep. want to feel confident like on where we're going. That's and it. you you as the architect in your business probably know. But does your prospect, does your customer at yes. each junction like know what they should be doing next? And that's yeah. that's where automation like can lead them. I also want to I want to call out as much as it is about the customer journey, mm -hmm. not every element in their journey is customer facing. Yes. And that's important as well as like yes. you can use automation to hold yourself accountable, to remind you of the things you should be doing, to remind your team of the things they should be doing. Um, that's a big part of like automation. If you only design customer facing, um, you know, interactions or, or, or steps, like that's fine. But you're missing yeah. out on, I, I would argue, you know, 50% of, of what is automated happens behind the scenes. It mm. still influences their customer experience, but it doesn't have to be, you know, um, a, a touch point that goes out directly to them in an automated fashion. Yes, Greg, I, I have to, I'm going to uh, show my hand here. One of my favorite things, I'll tell you what it was and how it evolved. Um, okay. One of my favorite things was internal notifications. I, I am the king of internal notifications. I will send those before I send an email, right? Because it lets me know without being logged into my system, what's happening now in between those milestones or throughout the customer journey, I have what I call indicators of interest. Every action is not important. I don't care about every action, but I know the actions that are indicators of high interest and I just want to be informed. Right. So I love getting those reminders when, when it was just the power of me, it reminded me what to do. And now that I can send them, you know, in an automation, do an if else or a decision diamond and determine who gets that notification to keep my team in the loop. It has evolved from email now to Slack. Mm, I, yeah. Greg, I cannot tell if listen, listeners, if you do not have a dedicated Slack channel for your CRM to send notifications of indicators of interest throughout the customer journey, that do do it, <laughs> do it. It's Be, oh my goodness, it's empowering, right? Ooh. It like it it helps you um, just create a, a deeper level of insight into yes. your audience, into their engagement, their behavior, and into yes. your journey. Like what like what patterns am I seeing? Because what you made what you may find is that like you thought you had these milestones in order, but people are like jumping around or, or yes. doing things in a different progression. And that's okay, right? That is. I, just, I, I do describe this as a linear process because in a perfect world, like it would be, but rarely is that the case, right? Your business yeah. probably has converging and diverging journeys yep. Yep. and that is okay. Yep. But if you, but each one should be mapped, right? Like it shouldn't end in a cul-de-sac. It should lead back to an on-ramp in that main freeway mm -hmm. that, that guides them somewhere. Man, that so that that's a quotable for you, Greg. Um, we're we're gonna change, turn that into a quotable. It should not lead to a cul-de-sac. Yeah, right. There's <laughs> there's got to right. be a plan. Yeah. There's got to be a plan. Let, but you know, get them on that road that that doesn't end. And I and I tell you, man, I uh, you just can't stress enough that the customer journey is not reactive. Right. It's it, mm -hmm. it very much is proactive. You you there oh, should Chris. be no step <laughs> that somebody I, takes that you're like, oh, how did you do that? What do I do? You know, like, here's here's the thing, listeners, <laughs> with or without your consent or design, <laughs> your customer journey already exists. It is already happening. It's and already so there. It may as well be something that you are proud of, that you intended, and that yep. you know consistently produces an experience that you are proud of, right? Like it, it's already there. The, it's you know, there. What, if you have had customers, they came from somewhere and they had a fulfillment experience. Yep. The really ch the challenge is like, 
how, when was the last time you looked at it? What is the last yeah. time you like poked at it and thought, or challenged, why is, why is it that way? Why, you know, who yep. set that up and, or did yep. we, right? Yeah, Greg, let, let me share this as well. Oh man, you got me wide open right now, Greg. This is, this is fun. All right. Um, one of, one of the notifications that I send to, uh, to my team in Slack is when somebody becomes a customer. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not about, uh, you know, us celebrating, though we do put emojis and all of that. You, yep, you yep, should yep. celebrate your wins um, when they become a customer. What I do is I send a notification the same what they purchased and to make sure you check their contact record that they use if they use a different email address. It's it seems so simple. Right, Greg. But you already know where I'm going. It can disjoint that entire customer experience. Because if, if they have a different record with a different oh email who's goodness. receiving the promotional emails, yeah, oh and, they, my, and, and yeah. they don't feel responsible for using two emails. They're like, well, you should know, right? Yeah, you should know. That's a that's a tricky one because um, the yep. system, you know, how do we expect automation to catch that? How does it know that there could be more than one Chris Davis, right? Yes. I, you know, you're, I mean, obviously yes. you're, you're the you're the favorite, but there could be more than <laughs> one. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, great and one. There, and and it's the hardest thing. So it it re there's no automation. Yeah, you, that is a manual check. Let and me you let have me to, you know. let me give you a, a little uh, aside, a little yeah, uh, yeah. deep dive for the for the for the technical uh, listeners. Um, yeah. I do I do something similar when we have a new member join uh, my Monkey Pod community, uh, but it's it's a it's an email, not a Slack uh, channel, which I sure. might steal. Yeah. Um, and it goes to my community manager. Her name is Jade, and it goes to to me as well. Um, and I not I, I, instead of just using like a static emoji, which is fine, um, I use Zapier to pick from a spreadsheet a list of celebratory gifts. <laughs> so I've got you know fifteen different wow. like gifts. Yeah. It's like you know Michael Scott and Dwight from the Office like partying or celebrating. And so it yeah. wrote it randomly chooses one of these gifts, wow. and so it cycles it into the email. So each time we get a notification saying there's a new member, it uses a different gift and. Periodically, I pop into there to add a few more, but I've curated this list of like celebration gifts, it. knowing that it's going to grab a different one, which is just a, you know, it, it adds a layer of, 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 um, you know, fun and originality to it, uh, where, you know, it is automated, but it yeah. doesn't feel uniform. It doesn't feel mm. um, repetitive because it cycles through those. I love it. That, that is amazing, man. I, 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 there, and actually, as you were explaining that, I'm like, there are so many other applications for that same automation. Totally. Right? Well, I actually got that from a customer of mine who was like, Hey, how can I create this thing? You know, and for, so the, we, we send a company wide sales notification. It uses a random rotating GIF and we came up with that solution together. And then I went and adopted it myself. Yeah. I love it. So now, shout out to crew, uh, to Brett from crew tracks for helping me Brett, come up with that one. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Brett. And, and it helps us highlight the point. Guess what? When you were mentioning that Greg, mm -hmm. I did not feel limited that I can only do it in Infusionsoft. Oh, I yeah, don't feel not. limited, right. right? Like I can only do it in active campaign, only HubSpot. That's the power when you break free that the tool is mandating what you do and you understand like your goals and what you're trying to achieve. And you're willing to say, okay, let me, I would like to send a different gift every time. That's yeah. the process. Now make the tool bend to that. Don't you dare bend your strategy <laughs> <laughs> right to the tool. It, it gets it's backwards. And um, I mentioned it earlier. I want you to share. I, I'll share one, too. But I want you to share uh, the first one that comes to mind, because I don't want to say the most. I want to share. I want you to share the, the first one that comes to mind when you think of the campaign that you built that is time tested. And this thing just keeps on working. What what is that that campaign for you in uh, if you saw? Yeah, so uh, I I will say that um, I don't think this is a hot take, um, at least not not for you. But I think some people may uh, you know may not feel this way until they dig in. But I think that there is a disproportionate focus on lead generation in small mm. business. I think you know mm. way too far too many businesses. It's sexy, right? They're they're focused on, you know, landing pages and 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 lead <laughs> capture and their ad strategy. Yeah. And yes, yeah. that's important, but it is only a piece of the puzzle and I think that people have a generally just don't focus enough on, you know, the optimization of of like how we're converting leads or how, you know, their path to becoming a customer or their their experience as a customer. Mm -hmm. So like a tried and true campaign of mine is not a revenue producing campaign, but it is mm -hmm. the experience that parallels one of my virtual courses, right? 
So the one I'm thinking of is specifically the, the CV Trilogy course, um, which teaches the foundational concepts and, and advanced features within the, the campaign builder uh, inside Keep. Yeah. And you know when somebody buys, right, it creates access to them and it uses uh, dynamic content, which is a, an Infusionsoft feature to um, you know, forecast out the, the schedule, right? If you yeah. bought this course today, if you watch the modules in this order, you're going to be done by this date and it sort of lays it out for them. Um, all relative to oh, when it is sent it. so that it wow. feels like, okay, this agenda has been prepared for me, right? Here's yes, where I go. Yes. Um, and then as a participate in the course, um, I'm using a, a, a third-party tool plus this to, mm -hmm. to update their contact record as they're watching, you know, videos. As they start a video at 30 seconds in, it, yeah. you know, updates it. And then as they finish the video, so it catches, hey, if they left off in video three of chapter one, right, mm -hmm. they're going to get a prompt that communicates with them and says, hey, Video four is where we tackle, you know, this next topic and like, don't, you know, you're missing out. So it, it's constantly leading them um, because I don't know, this is maybe this is going to uh, sound kind of basic, but you know, that my content is only as valuable as their willingness to consume it, right? If somebody yep. buys that course yep. and doesn't do the work, the content doesn't serve them. And that creates a customer who through no fault of my own may resent monkey pod because they didn't, yeah. you know, do the work or didn't fulfill on it. Um, so the, I use automation to do some handholding there to guide them through that experience um, to make sure that, you know, it's prompting them at the right points. Um, and yeah. I, I do give people the option to opt out of that because it can feel a yes. little big brothery. And so I yeah. want to make sure that they've got some, um, some influence, some agency in their experience. I think that's another important layer of automation mm -hmm. is like, you can automate the majority of use cases, but there will be a minority of customers for whom that is not their preference. And you can account for that yes. by, you know, just giving them a choice. Hey, click this button to fast track to the end or click this button to, to turn off these notifications, et cetera. Yeah. I, um, you know, I always tell people the, the back, the, the exit should be just as big, if not bigger. As oh my exit. gosh. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It, here's, here's, uh, I think content producers, yeah, at large, we we sometimes apologize for like, you know, if this wasn't valuable or if you didn't, if this wasn't a fit or et cetera, if you're not interested, we sort of like hedge our, our conversations and, and our information that way. But the people who are, for whom it's not a fit have tuned out, they're gone, you know, yeah. like the only yeah. people listening to this podcast right now are interested. They're, they've lasted however many minutes into this, into yes. this interview because right. they're interested. So you know, there's a piece of me that's like, well, double down. The same thing is true for your marketing. As your marketing builds, the people who are still reading, still opening are telling you something by being there and yeah. you can use that. Yeah, um, but as you said, I think it's equally important to give them an exit, you know, a, an escape hatch or a, yeah. an eject you button. Know, we're, we're not holding anybody hostage, right? Like, right. <laughs> who we're for, we're for, we're confident in our content. And um, I love your example. I, I have one similar uh, campaign, similar than, than the one that you mentioned that 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 I do like, not as customized and personalized as yours. And I would say for me, um, I've got like a qualifier automation, you know, that uh, and, and actually the automation is basic because the automation just sends out the emails. But my software, the third party software that I'm using to qualify does the routing. So uh -huh. when you look at it, it doesn't look if they look like disjointed automations. Yep. But if you had if you understood that the third party was doing the routing and sending them, man, it's it's one of the again, two to three emails per outcome. You know, most people who run some form of quiz online probably have a, a, a similar version, but it's so intentional. And what I love about it is, you know, personalization is really easy when you know the previous step. Right. It's when you don't know the previous step because you're not tracking, you're not intentional with the building out the journey is where personalization is like, oh, what do I yes. say? Let me just put first name in the in the I, subject line. You've done an episode on this, haven't you? Is like the like what you are listening for and how you could use that to impact yes. their experience. Yeah. Yes, I'm telling man. you, man, it, it's it's um, it's the easiest thing that most people aren't doing. <laughs> Every time your prospects take an action, like you said, not everything yeah. needs to be tracked. Yes. But when they click a link to a specific blog post, they're telling you this is something I'm interested in. When they click a link yes. to a specific product, I have a campaign. I call it, actually, it's a series of campaigns. I call it the Mona Lisa. 
Mm. Um, and it starts when people visit any of my sales pages. If you go to any checkout page, but don't yeah. check out, yeah. right? 20, 30 minutes later, it's just an abandoned cart email. Sure. I call it, uh, do you watch Parks and Rec? Are you familiar with that, that show? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So there's a character in it called Mona Lisa Saperstein, uh, John Ralphio's <laughs> sister, who has this line where she's like, money, please. And she's asking her dad for money. So I call it the Mona Lisa because it's basically just reaching out to that person who you know was just on your sales page and saying, hey, you know, would you, are you interested? Did you want to check out? Did, did the ice cream man drive by and you got distracted, right? Let's get you yeah. back to that sales page. Yes. But um, I do, I've added layers to it over the years and I don't send that promo if they've purchased the course before, right? Because if, if they visit that page and they already have bought that thing, can you imagine if that sales email shows up, right? So I add decision yeah. logic. And if they are a referral partner of mine, instead of sending them the follow-up link, I send them their promotional link. Hey, you were just yeah. on this page. Were you looking for this link so that you could recommend it to someone else, right? So there's, yeah. I think there's just small tweaks like that that you can do based on what you already know about yes. the people in your audience to make their experience feel more personal, yeah. right? And that's, you know, automation doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be cold and robotic. If it's done well, it yes. can feel personal and valuable. Yeah. And, and you said you said something, Greg, I got to just quick do a quick highlight. Then I want to do a, 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 a two round quick. Uh, what is it? Fast, fast action, fast answers, whatever, whatever it is. Um, OK, lightning but, round. Yeah. Lightning round. There it is. Okay. Uh, two, two, uh, lightning round. Um, you said I've added layers to mm. this automation as time went on. And that is it, it. It what's in there subtly is your <laughs> expertise and experience with not trying to do too much too soon, too early, right? I was just sharing with my community early today. I said, you know, I've had I have this new process that I've been thinking through, and I haven't automated be automated it because it's a new process. Because mm -hmm. th that's my fundamental rule. I don't automate new processes. I yeah. need to work it and figure Gotta out, feel like, it out. Yep, you know, yeah. <laughs> get a feel for this thing first. But when you say add layers, it just speaks to you know, I've said it many times, you know, your first time is your worst time. It Don't try to get it perfect. Most people look at somebody's layered solution yeah. and that's what they say I want built. And it's like, you know what? You didn't even need 10 layers. <laughs> you needed the core and like one and a half layers and, and you were fine. That's but it, since man. they're anchored on, I need the whole thing. Give me the whole onion. <laughs> it's like you don't launched, need all those layers. Launched doesn't mean finished. Mm -hmm. it, that's that's mm -hmm. it, you know don't let perfection get in the way of progress there's you mm -hmm. know a dozen different ways to say mm -hmm. this but here's the thing right as small business owners we are you know intensely passionate about our our brand and our product and 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 proud of it as we should be yeah yeah so we have this i i we have this tendency to like want everything to be perfect buttoned up dialed in you know and 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 just like finished in order for us to get it out the door but what I find time and time again is that if you can be willing to get that first version live, the things you were like kind of hoping to add, your customers and the data behind their experience will tell you if those yes. are the right next steps, right? Because <laughs> we have hunches. We have like, oh, I want to add this GIF or I want to, you know, I want to create this other page and like link them to that. But maybe the data will tell you that's not a priority. And instead you should put your focus over here. And so yeah. launching can really be liberating. It can help you reprioritize. Yeah. Um, or you might find that, that it works as is. And it's, you know, it's it's producing what I needed it to produce. Yep, yep. New, new layers are necessitated by that contact throughput, man. That's it. Get people through there, see what they're saying. All right, Greg. Oh my goodness, man. Uh, just this, by the way, everybody, it's like this every time, just so you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a lightning round to serve our audience um, even more, man. Okay. Two, two questions. First round, when it's time to build out a campaign in Infusionsoft, are you a analog in some capacity or, or digital flow chart in some way, or are you using keeps? campaign builder because they have the published in draft mode where you can draw it out infusionsoft is unique to where you can add uh notes anywhere on the canvas so it's yeah. a really flexible free-flowing builder what, what what which approach are you taking i i build it in the campaign builder yep. so yep. i was hired at infusionsoft in march 2012 which 
coincidentally was the same month the campaign builder was released. So my wow. like relationship to and understanding of automation has evolved like in that context. So wow. it is like a, a second language that I speak or, or like a, a comfort zone yeah. for me. So that yeah. is where I spend most of my time. But yeah. interestingly, when I collaborate with others, <laughs> I have to like pull myself out and like go to a Google doc and organize the email yeah. copy and like kind of, you know, map things together. Uh, right. using, I use draw.io a fair okay. bit, which is a, okay. another like flow charting kind of yep. uh, tool yep. in the Google suite. Um, but you know, I'm a solopreneur. Well, I, I do have a community manager, Jade, but uh, yep. that's a, a recent hire as of last year. Um, right. So most of my processes, it's just, you know, uh, uh, it's just me. And I, I have a, a, an idea for a uh, like for a blog or, or a YouTube series called co-working with myself. It's just like conversations <laughs> like with the different, you know, Greg, the CEO, Greg, the yep. marketing guy, Greg, right. the social manager, right? Like all these different roles that I play in my business. Um, but fortunately we often agree the different versions of, of yeah. me. Um, yeah. So I build in the campaign builder and I do use the notes pretty extensively um, yep. with like, here's the to-do list. Here's where I left things off. Here are the things that are missing. Yeah. Um, it's a, I find it's, a, it's just a nice way to keep everything visually represented on the same canvas. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if you, you know, if you followed the one conversation example I gave earlier with the, 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 you know, um, milestones and the bridges in between the, there are direct parallels to Infusionsoft's goals and the yes. sequences in between. It's a really yes. natural transition there. And I know that, you know, the other automation platforms have their, their, their equivalents for that. There's, there's, you know, mm -hmm. um, technology to support this, you know, the same type of flow. I just don't have all the, the vernacular, uh, yeah. you know, nailed down for each other platform. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. One of the things that I, I do enjoy about the campaign builder in Infusionsoft is how text friendly it is. So when I was using it at lead pages, those sequences, you weren't limited to just like two words and all like, you mm -hmm. could really define the sequences before somebody went into them. And then, of course, you couple that with the notes and the fact that the yeah. canvas is open. I, it, it's, right. it doesn't snap. Now, granted, back in the day, I'm, I'm, I'm date, I'll date myself here. Back in the day, everybody, there used to be a time where if you had like a spider web looking automation, you were the per like you were the expert. The more complicated <laughs> you can post a picture of your of your campaign, the the, it was, the more it's a flex, yeah, <laughs> right. It's like look at all of these lines, right? Yeah. And it's since then migrated. I like the cleanliness that I'm starting to see now out of just just everyone across the board. But yeah, man, I, I remember empty sequences using empty sequences just to make sure that because uh, most of the time you have to use an empty sequence if you want to use a decision diamond and kind of skip somebody on if you didn't want to use a goal. Um, so yeah, that visual representation and I and I also like like how it shows where somebody has been, right? How there many is people a, have been there, who's there now, you know, things of that nature. Yeah, it gives you sort of a visual, um, like understanding of the flow, the path people are taking, yep. which which can, you know, can be enlightening um, if it doesn't match up with what you, you know, may have thought. Right, right. Uh, there's a quote I'm reaching for and I'm, I don't have it. So I, I'm, I'm hoping you can you can fill me in okay. or, or maybe it's not a quote, it's, a, it's like a concept. Um, I'm picturing like an arc, uh, mm -hmm. and, and there's like simplistic at the lower left-hand corner of that arc. And then at the yeah. top, there's like complex. And then on the right, there's, there's, um, simple. And it, mm. the point is that like simple is on the other side of complexity, right? Simplistic <laughs> is like really basic and like, yeah. you know, in many cases, not valuable. And then there's like complex where like you're solving a problem, but you're doing it in a complex way. And yeah. then it takes like to push past that another level of expertise to be able to distill it down into mm. simplicity. Yeah. And that's where I think we're talking about with those like spider web campaigns, oftentimes as impressive as those may be, they were overkill or they were a, yeah. they were a they were a workaround because yeah. somebody misunderstood a feature or yes. or didn't you know and if you can press on that and push through that complexity oftentimes you can get to that next level of yes. like no like here's really the same outcome but done in a in a more manageable understandable way Man. without compromising the experience we're providing absolutely all right final round of the lightning round um you mentioned one but if there is any two to three Two to three third-party plugins you feel like every Infusionsoft user should have. 
Mm. I know well, I know one is a gimme. We both use the, the first yeah. one, which you've already said. I'll let so you say I, it. But. I'm a big, big fan of plus this. Yes. Um, not yeah. not just it, it's it's a it's tough to say, like, what does plus this do? Because each of their features are kind of like standalone functionality that mm -hmm. that, um, you know, solve problems in different ways. Um, and it's not just an Infusionsoft tool. I believe they they yes. also integrate with a handful of the other platforms out there. Mm -hmm. So feel free to check it out. Yep. Um, but what I love about Plus This is how responsive their team is. I'm the type of guy where like, as I'm using a feature, I'll be like, ooh, it'd be great if that, you know, had this or if that could do that. And so yep. I suggested in their user group and they're a small enough company that they can respond oftentimes quickly and, and add love these, it. you know, tweaks and modifications. So I love uh, the way that they are pivoting, that they're, you know, solving problems in real time. Um, and that um, they're, they're it, like any tool, right? You want to measure the ROI of it. But plus this makes it super easy because they're, you know, it only takes two or three of their features to justify whatever you're paying. They have a $40 a month package yep. or an $80 yep. a month package. Um, and I find it's, it's a no brainer, um, especially because every feature that they offer is a, it solves a problem. Like they wouldn't <laughs> offer a feature if it, if it like didn't do anything, right? Yeah, but it, it's, it's, not it's, there. it's yeah. there because somebody or a bunch of people more likely were like, hey, we would really love it if we could X, Y, Z. And so plus yeah. this kind of steps in and has this collection there. So plus yeah. this is, is, a, is a must have. Um, I'm a, a Zapier fanboy. I didn't, yep. I didn't get it for a while. I was yeah. like, man, I'm like, what am I missing on? Everybody's talking about Zapier. Uh, but I, you have to remember, I worked at Infusionsoft. Mm -hmm. So I was hypersensitive to the like another add on conversation. Like everybody, right. you know, small businesses are oftentimes, you know, making ends meet and have to be budget conscious. Um, and so recommending additional tools was something that I avoided yeah. because yeah. I wanted to. I, that's actually part of why I have the expertise I do with the native software is just from like forcing myself to try to like make everything work in house yes. as, as use all the native functionality. But um, Zapier is a is an essential integration and it goes well beyond, you know, its power with keep. Uh, it has mm -hmm. internal functionality. I use it for all of my social syndication when I publish a new blog post or a new YouTube video. I've got zaps set up that go to all my social channels, um, not just once, but you know, at a cascading interval so that they yep. get more mileage out of them. Yep. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I just can't say enough good things about Zapier. I do, uh, I did, I recently added this um, where I use Zapier to create certificates for all my courses uh, mm. using Google Slides. So I set up a Google slide template and then when somebody finishes a course, you know, using the plus this video tracking, I know that they've completed the course. Yeah. Um, it takes their information, create post to Zapier, uses Zapier to create a, a new template from that Google slide, which yeah. can merge in their name and the date and my signature. Yeah. Um, and then it, it exports that, that slide as a PDF, which I can store in a custom field on that contact record mm. and ship it off to them. It's, it. man, that's, it's totally not necessary. <laughs> but I get it. it. It's not, it's not, it's not doing anything. They're not expecting it, but it's a nice to have. It and is. automation can, it, you know, when you get to that point where you're past the ROI and you're talking about like, what else could I be doing, right? Yeah. Think about the ways it could enrich your customer experience. And some of those things are non-essential, but those are what differentiate your brand and what people <sighs> talk about. Man. So Zapier would be uh, tool number two. Um, and I, you know what? A couple of years ago, I would have said Wistia as tool number three. There's other video mm. hosting platforms out there, but I love the tool set Wistia has. Um, yeah. I've actually been leaning more and more into YouTube just from like a SEO strategy perspective. Sure. I, you know, sure. the YouTube gets the, the the search rankings and and reach that way. So I have been using less of Wistia, um, but I'll say I'll, I'll go with Access Ally, which is my membership mm. plugin. Oh, and man, I love Natalie. She's yeah, Natalie savvy, and Robin, man. they are great. Yeah. Um, there, that's another. This is, I don't know. I mean, we live in the most connected day and age there ever has been. Yep. Um, that yep. is true every time I say it. Um, yep. But more and more, I find that people want to do business with people, with businesses that we know and that we yep. feel good about, and. You know, I have nothing bad to say about the team at Memberium or, or Customer Hub or some of the other membership platforms out there. Um, but I just really like 
uh, the Access Ally team and their community and and what they stand for and what they're about and um, and it helps that Access Ally has you know built in um, e learning tools pro, you know progress tracking um, and video tracking and some of their own features there so yeah. it it works really well but uh, Access Ally is just a personal choice uh, yeah. the 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 value it offers is a you know a membership experience and it works with WordPress but there are others that you know are standalone yep. um, and that yep. creates a, a private environment where I can host content for people and their access dictates what they do and don't see which Love it, man. it fits naturally with my business model yep. but I think it's also I think more businesses have an opportunity to use something like that than they may realize I would I would argue most businesses could have a customer center oh, or a billing goodness. center or a training center yes. uh, that helps empower their users. Yeah. Greg, this is a whole nother episode. I'm I'm taming myself <laughs> not to go there. That's all right. You you know what? I I'm I'm gonna say it. Bold bold statement alert. I feel that platforms, the misinterpretation, and sometimes it's from their marketing of platforms like Kajabi mm. really missed that point. You know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. missed that membership for customers and that access via levels integrated with your CRM. They just miss it. And mm -hmm. again, no knock against Kajabi and Kajabi users. I just want to make I, it I've used Kajabi. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It's just a different, it's a different experience, right? If, mm -hmm. if I'm looking for that very course friendly, you know, go through achievement base, go ahead use Kajabi. But if it's I want easy to make Kajabi look oh good. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. It, it beautiful templates. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I want to give a more comprehensive experience beyond courses, right. And restrict content, give my people somewhere to go to do some training on um, whatever the case I'm beyond that. So yeah. it's okay to keep these platforms in their respective most, although they don't necessarily want to be boxed in. I get that's it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, I get it. So, um, Greg, I can't thank you enough, man. Again, we can go on for for hours, not just minutes, but hours. Man. I, I am I am not known for my brevity. Yeah. So <laughs> I appreciate you indulging me. Yeah. Yes. No, this was good. And I know it's going to be highly valuable. People have heard something. They're like, how do I learn how to do that? Wait a minute. <laughs> rewind. You will probably need to listen to this one a couple times and if you were listening to it at 2x because you know these podcasts yeah, yeah, up, yeah. you might want to slow it down because right in the middle there was some there was a lot of nuggets you know dropped there so if somebody wants to get connected with you greg learn about your community or just stay connected in, in any capacity where where should they go yeah, monkeypodmarketing.com. Um, you'll find it all there. Uh, if you are specifically looking for the community, uh, you could go to ogmembership.com. Um, <laughs> I, I learned like a year ago, I learned how to buy a domain and just redirect it wherever I want. So I went on a little a little spending frenzy getting all my, all my URLs <laughs> dialed in. But uh, I am not hard to get a hold of and I love these types of conversations. So feel free to drop me a line on any of the social channels, uh, reach out. Um, if you have questions about anything we talked about here, but yeah, this was a, an absolute blast, Chris. I can't thank you enough, man. Yes. Thank you, Greg. We'll have the links of course in the show notes and uh, man, Greg, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time, man. All good. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to this episode. And I, I guess maybe I should have done a better job warning you on the front end. Um, whenever Greg and I get together, that's that's what I was really excited about. It's like we have so many conversations, whether it's in Facebook Messenger, email, what, whatever capacity that I feel so much value comes out. So I'm I'm, ex I'm pleased that we were able to capture that. And when you just think of a lot of the things that Greg said, uh, though we were focused on his expertise and, and his expertise and his in the tools that he uses. Can you not see how it expands beyond that? How a lot of what he was saying is just a responsible approach to automating a business. We can never overlook that. We can never overlook that. There is a responsible approach. There is a way to do this that that we're talking about. Right there. There's a way to do it um, to where you you still are highly effective. Right. You are you're still highly effective, um, but highly authentic. And you're not erroneously leaning on your technology to do something that is your responsibility to do and instruct it to do. All right. So who needed to hear this? Who's that Infusionsoft user that's a little frustrated right now? They just maybe they just need to recalibrate their approach. Maybe wrong. The it, Infusionsoft keep. What is it? Infusionsoft by keep may be the tool for them. 
And maybe there, maybe this episode helps shape things up and put things in perspective. Maybe they've been uh, thinking of leaving in future stuff and going elsewhere. Whoever that is, send them this episode, send them this episode. So whatever decision they make, it can be an informed decision. OK, here at Automation Bridge, remember, we just want you to choose the right tools for your strategy and your business growth. All right. So if you found value in today's episode, now is the time. This is my invitation for my first time listeners. Come join the All Systems Go family. How do you join it? There's a seat at the table. How do you sit down? Go into your your podcasting app, wherever you get podcasts, hit the subscribe button. While you're at it, leave a five star rating and review. If you are confused in any capacity, how do I leave a review where we've got you covered? Go to automationbridge.com forward slash review and we will take we will handle the capture and and posting of your testimonial for you or your five your five star rating and review for you. All right. Here at Automation Bridge, we're dedicated to training digital marketing professionals to become automation service providers. These are people who go beyond the principles taught in digital marketing and really focus on those automated systems, uh, starting with marketing and sales and goes beyond and, and reaches every operational system in a business to help them scale by maintaining a small footprint, a small uh, human or a small payroll footprint. OK, and you need there. There is an approach and a way to do this. And that is what we train automation service providers on because businesses need marketers who can handle, who can properly navigate automation by taking marketing technology, your business strategy, aligning it with the goals and putting software to work, employing software for the responsible deployment, the deployment of automated systems for your rapid growth. OK, so if that's you, if you when you listen to Greg and I talk on this podcast, it feels like you should be at the table with us. You have stories to, to, to tell. You've got marketing battlefield scars to show. <laughs> right. This is you. You're that you would have fit right into this conversation. That is a, a great indicator that you may make a, a good automation service provider. So do me a favor, go to automationbridge.com forward slash ASP and take the next steps to talk to myself or someone on my team to assess if you would be a good fit for our upcoming uh, program launch to become an automation service provider. The need for, for automation service providers has, has never been greater. It's never been greater. And we are working in various capacities to equip as many people and businesses with the resources to properly, let me say, navigate. Let me say properly leverage, leverage the tools of technology and automation for their business success. I don't want it to be a question mark or a confusing point anymore. OK, um, lastly, if you enjoy Greg as a guest and you have someone else who would make a great guest for the All Systems Go podcast or you, yes, you listener, you would make a great guest for the All Systems Go podcast. Go to automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. There you can submit your information or your referral information and they will have an opportunity to come on the podcast. I'll be able to interview them and give some insight to whatever their expertise or area of profession is. All right. All the show notes and podcasts are accessible at automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. You can subscribe there and listen to all and any other episodes at your leisure. So until next time, I see you online. Automate responsibly, my friends. <laughs>